Are you going to stay here in Washington? Do you plan to be part of the administration? I am driven, um, first and foremost, by my kids and um, their happiness. So that's always going to be my top priority, and, and that's um, my decisions will always be flexible enough to ensure that that their needs are are being considered um, first and foremost. So, so they will really drive that that answer for me. I think for me, I, I came down here. It's about the impact. Um, it's about being able to deliver for the forgotten men and women that I met over the course of two years as I campaigned around this country, and over the last two and a half years as I've traveled to almost every state in this nation. It's about providing pathways to opportunity. I'm, I'm deeply passionate, but you know, the day I walk into the West Wing and I don't feel a shiver up my spine is the day I've been here too long. Here's Ivanka Trump laying the groundwork for her not to return to the White House should Trump get reelected in 2020. And I should mention right off the bat that while it would be difficult for her, the real victims here are the American people who won't have the breadth of knowledge and experience in the White House that comes from making purses. Now, Face the Nation's Margaret Brennan is taking heat for what amounted to a decidedly softball interview, given that Ivanka was essentially just handed a platform to grandstand about how much of an honor, truly, that it was to help so, so many people. And that's it. There were no follow-up questions or pushback or mere mention of the fact that another reason to possibly not return is that she was never qualified to be there in the first place. She makes purses. She ran sweatshops in China rife with labor abuses. Not only that, she's exploited her father's position for her own personal gain, securing more than a dozen trademarks from China, including those for voting machines. Now, let's just breeze by the fact that the daughter of a president who already has a pension for cheating in elections is getting into the business of voting machines machine trademarks. The point is that, like her father, she's used the government to benefit herself and her businesses. And I know what you're thinking. A Trump? Exploiting the federal government to line their own pockets while serving in positions funded by taxpayer dollars meant to serve the American people? No. She says she's working for the forgotten men and women. Only, the forgotten men and women in this country are the poor. They're the sick and homeless. They're those in need of health insurance and mental health treatment. They are minorities and immigrants. This administration not only hasn't worked for those people, it's led an ongoing assault against them since day one. This administration is still, still working to hobble the ACA in the courts even after the Obamacare repeal was voted down in the Senate. This administration has given license to racists and xenophobes and anti-Semites to spew hateful rhetoric and commit hateful acts as hate crime violence hit a 16-year high under Trump. This administration has committed one of the worst human rights atrocities in modern American history, separating immigrant children from their parents and locking them in cages, where some went on to be sexually abused or even died. This administration has set its sights on programs helping seniors afford drugs, on the Children's Health Insurance Program, on food stamps, on Pell Grants, on student loan relief for those defrauded by predatory colleges, on the poverty level itself. This administration's trade war raised prices for consumers around the country on millions of items, ranging from clothing to electronics to food. So unless the forgotten men and women are America's CEOs and billionaires, this administration has only hurt working people in this country. Even Ivanka herself, in this very interview, pats herself on the back for her work on paid maternity leave. And yet at Ivanka's own company, her former chief marketing officer, Marissa Kraxberger, wrote that she and her colleagues had to fight, quote, long and hard to get Ivanka to finally agree to eight weeks paid maternity leave leave. And I'll tell you what, I for one never expected this, especially from the daughter of the America First president, who manufactures all of his clothing overseas. So until Ivanka cedes her position in the White House to someone actually qualified to be there, any talk of the difference she's made for us regular people is just self-serving nonsense. The fact is that our tax dollars are funding a White House staff that's never been able to take off the training wheels because the only thing they were qualified to do was make handbags and sell ties made in China. Whereas the rest of this country needs to be able to actually perform at their jobs, that apparently isn't the case in the Trump administration, where the sole qualification for a position is who your dad is. Which might begin to explain why, even after three years, not a day goes by where our government functions as it should.